wholeheartedly I give my life, Lord, to you. In everything I say and live and do. May my life be a reflection of Jesus and His direction. Wholeheartedly I give my life. Wholeheartedly to you. Hello and welcome to Wholeheartedly Bible and Music Publications. And I'm so glad that you're here with us today. I pray that you're having a really great week and that the Lord is blessing you and um, whatever's going on in your life, that you're giving Him the glory for it. And um, if you haven't visited all of me wholeheartedly.com, there's a um, section on there that says contact us. And you can go on there and I'd love to hear from you if you have a prayer request or something that you'd like to share. I'd love to hear from you there and um, be able to pray with you if there's something that, that you'd be willing to share. So that's a way that you can contact me and let me know maybe something that's on your heart and mind that that um, we might could pray about together. So um, uh, feel free to go over there and share that with me. And um, today we're going to be in Daniel. And um, we're actually going to do a lot, a lot more reading than we than I normally do, but um, it kind of goes along with what we'll be talking about. So um, I hope that you'll join in along with that and um, and bear with me. So today we're in the book of Daniel and we're in chapter one, and um, it says, "In the third year of the reign of Jehoiakim, king of Judah." came Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, unto Jerusalem, and besieged it. And in verse 3 it says, And the king spake unto Ashpenaz, the master of his eunuchs, that he should bring certain of the children of Israel, and of the king's seed, and of the princes, children in whom was no blemish, but well-favored and skillful in all wisdom, and cunning in knowledge and understanding science, and such as had ability in them to stand in the king's palace, and whom they might teach the learning and tongue of the Chaldeans. And the king appointed them a daily provision of the king's meat and of the wine which he drank, so nourishing them three years, that at the end thereof they might stand before the king. Now among these were of the children of Judah, Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah unto whom the prince of the eunuchs gave names, for he gave unto Daniel the name of Belteshazzar, and to Hananiah of Shadrach, and to Mishael of Meshach, and to Azariah of Abednego. But Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the portion of the king's meat, nor with the wine which he drank. Therefore he requested of the prince of the eunuchs that he might not defile himself. Now God had brought Daniel into favor and tender love with the prince of the eunuchs. And the prince of the eunuchs said unto Daniel, I fear my lord the king who hath appointed your meat and your drink, for why should he see your faces worse lacking than the children which are of your sort? Then shall he make me endanger my head to the king. Then said Daniel to Melzar, whom the prince of the eunuchs had set over Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, Prove thy servants, I beseech thee, ten days, and let them give us pulse to eat and water to drink. Then let our countenances be looked upon before thee, and the countenance of the children that eat of the portion of the king's meat, and as thou seest, deal with thy servants. So he consented to them in this matter and proved them ten days. And at the end of ten days, their countenances appeared fairer and fatter in flesh than all the children which did eat the portion of the king's meat. Thus, Melzar took away the portion of their meat and the wine which they should drink and gave them pulse. As the, for these four children, God gave them knowledge and skill in all learning and wisdom, and Daniel had understanding in all visions and dreams. Now at the end of the days that the king had said he should bring them in, then the prince of the eunuchs brought them in before Nebuchadnezzar. 
And the king communed with them, and among them all was found none like Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. Therefore stood they before the king. And in all matters of wisdom and understanding that the king inquired of them, he found them ten times better than all the magicians and astrologers and were, that were in his, all his realm. And Daniel continued even unto the first year of King Cyrus. And then we're going to turn over to um, Daniel chapter 3 and verse 3. It says, Then the princes, the governors, and captains, the judges, the treasurers, the counselors. This is the, the part of the story where, um, where Nebuchadnezzar was um, building an, an image to himself. It says, Then the princes, the governors, the captains, the judges, the treasurers, the counselors, the sheriffs, and all the rulers of the provinces were gathered together unto the dedication of the image that Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. And they stood before the image that Nebuchadnezzar had set up. Then an herald cried aloud, To you it is commanded, O people, nations, and languages, that at what time ye hear the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sackbut, psaltery, dulcimer, and all kinds of music, ye fall down and worship the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. And whoso falleth not down and worshipeth shall the same hour be cast into the midst of a burning fiery furnace. And then if you look over in verse 17 and 18, it says, this was the response of Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, and um, Daniel. It says, um, this is in verse 16, it says, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said, it said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer thee in this matter. So they were being respectful. They said, 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 we're not, we're not stay, saying this lightly. And it says, if it be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace, and he will deliver us out of thine hand, O king. Then verse 18 says, but if not, be it known unto the king, thee, O king, that we will not serve thy gods nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. They took a stand and they said, we'll do right no matter what. No matter what God decides, we choose right and we choose the Lord. And then in chapter six and verse, um, y'all bear with me. Because remember I told you it was gonna be, this is the last of the reading, but um, remember I told you it was gonna be a little bit more reading today than we normally do. But um, in chapter six in verse three, then it says, Then this Daniel was preferred above the presidents and princes because an excellent spirit was in him. And the king thought to set him over the whole realm. Then the presidents and princes sought to find occasion against Daniel concerning the kingdom, but they could find none occasion nor fault for as much as he was faithful. Neither was there any error or fault found in him. So um, the verse that we're going to focus on, we read it again. It says, Then this Daniel was preferred above the presidents and princes because an excellent spirit was found in him. And the king thought to set him over the whole realm. And so um, it says, it says um, that he had an excellent spirit. And, um, and so the reason that that he had an excellent spirit um was and 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 he he had an excellent spirit and and he was chosen to be over all the presidents and all the princes um because back in in chapter one um remember we read um in verse eight it says but daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself. He chose back then. He said, I will not, I will not, you know, they're asking me to do this and, and I'm, I'm going to choose. I'm not going to defile myself. And, and he made that choice back then that, that that was where, that was where he stood. And these are my convictions and this is what I stand upon and this is what I will and I will not do. And so when somebody comes at me and says, you know, here you're confronted with this. He says, I'm sorry, I can't do that. Um, 
And so he already made his stand and he already knew what he would and would not do. And, um, and he would, then he was respectful to his, the, the, the eunuch that was above him. And, and, um, he said, you know, let's prove it this, this way. And, and what I found, um, I found so, um, interesting was they were going to do it for three years. They were going to give them the king's meat and you're going to be so much stronger and you're just going to, you know, be so much wiser and this is going to be so great and, you know, we're going to, we're going to point you a daily provision of the king's meat and the king's wine, which he drinks, and you're going to be nourished for three years. And then after these three years, you're going to stand before the king and just, you know, you're going to be proved before the king. And then Daniel, he said, you know what? My God's a big God, and I'm going to show you what a big God he is. And, you know, I want to respectfully request that, you know, I, I'm just not going to defile myself in that way. I, I don't, I don't, I don't do that. And, you know, Daniel was, Daniel was in a heathen land. He had been captured. He was, he was, they said they had, they had besieged Jerusalem, and he was of the children of Israel. And so he was, he was taken into captivity and now he was being told what he was going to do in this other palace and here's what you're going to do and this is how you're going to do it. But he still had convictions that he said, you know what, I believe that God wants me to do this this way. Do you know we're Christians and we're living in a world of sin and sometimes our sin is it confronts us in this world and it says you know you know why don't you do this and somebody you know maybe at work or or out in the community will say you know hey can you do this for me or hey will you do this and sometimes we have to be willing to stand and say no I'm sorry I can't do that and Daniel he was willing to do that he was willing to to say you know what you know that's that's not acceptable by by the the word of God. It just isn't something that I can do. And um, he said, "I will not defile myself." And you know, there are certain things that do defile us. There are certain things that that we should not listen to. They defile our ears. There are certain things that we shouldn't watch. They defile our eyes. And there are certain things that we shouldn't we shouldn't um, put in our eyes and ears because then they come out our mouth and then our mouth is defiled. And there's certain things we shouldn't read. Um, there's certain things that we, places we shouldn't go as a Christian because then, then we are defiled and, and, um, and we're supposed to be set apart as a Christian. Um, and, and be, we're supposed to be proud that we're a Christian, that, that, that God has made us um, one of his own. When we become a Christian, he makes us one of his own, and we're his child. And so that's, that's such a, uh, a special thing. And, and so Daniel, he said, you know what, I'm, I'm a child of God, and, 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 and I'm one of the children of Israel, and I know there's certain things that I'm just, I cannot defile myself. And, and so I'm, I'm set apart. And so he said, you know what? You want to do this for three years? You know what? I have, a gift. I have a big God. I'll prove it for 10 days. And they did it for 10 days. And you know what? Their countenances were, were fairer. And, and they said, you, you know what? You are. You're wiser and you're fairer. Countenances are fairer. But, but what proved that, that they were different? Their countenance. And you know what? In, in to the world, how do we prove that we're different? What shows them that we have anything that that would that they would that they w would want? It's our countenance. We as Christians, we've got to say, you know what? I love my Jesus, and you know it doesn't matter if you know I had a bad day at work or um, or. I um, maybe have something going on in my family that that is a struggle. When when I go out into the community and I go out to serve, um, and anytime we walk out our doors or walk out of the church, we we're called to serve. When I go out, you know what? My countenance should be one of, do they see Jesus in me? And um, 
And, you know, that's a hard thing to do at all times. We have to really work at it. But that's why we have to be like Daniel and purpose in our heart. We have to on purpose say, you know what? I have to be looking at all times to say, I'm going to guard my heart and say, I, I cannot defile my self. I cannot defile my eyes. I cannot defile my ears. I cannot, I cannot allow things to come in, in through those avenues that would, that would defile my heart and, and would make me say things that would not be the right things and would make me, um, have thoughts that I would not, that would not be pleasing to the Lord. And so Daniel, he purposed those things in his heart. And, you know, it, what reveals to others an excellent spirit is our countenance. And so let's keep our countenance in the right place where, where when others see us, they say, wow, there's something different about them and their family. And they, they, you know, not that they're always bubbly and they're just, you know, they're just, but, but that, that you have a pleasant countenance and that, you know, you're not down in the mully groves, but that you, that, that, you know, that you have a joy in and, and that there's something different because, because the joy of the Lord is, is your strength. And, um, you know, be generous with your smile. Others are hurting. And, uh, you know, that there's always something that there's always needs. And, and, you know, others are hurting. And so be generous with your smile. And um, smiles are free. Give them away. Um, so, um, anyway, um Daniel, he was somebody that I, one thing I, I saw that that I thought I thought was so um, neat was it said that in verse twenty of Daniel chapter one it says and in all matters of wisdom and understanding that the king inquired of them he found them ten times better than all the magicians and astrologers that were in all his realm all his realm that's amazing so when you prove God and you say you know what. I'm going to I'm going to purpose in my heart that that I don't want to I don't want to defile myself and I and I am going to keep that excellent spirit. I am going to choose to have that excellent spirit that Daniel had. And and I I I want to keep that excellent spirit at all times. Then, you know what? Then, you know, God can do great things through you and you know what he he says that 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 they were 10 times better than everyone standing around you and god you know what he he is in the blessing business and many times he blesses those who who prove him and say you know what god let's show them how big you are and so um i hope you will take hope and encouragement through through the life of daniel um he sure encouraged me this week and um, and I'm going to work at having an excellent spirit and keeping the joy of the Lord on my countenance. And so the verse that we are going to um, use as our scripture song this week is Daniel chapter 6 and verse 3. And um, that is, then this Daniel was preferred above the presidents and princes because an excellent spirit was, was in him. And the king thought to set him over the whole realm. So um, I'll sing it um, a couple times and so that you can get the hang of it. Join in at any time. And, um, and, then, um, and then I hope you'll, you'll sing along um, with me. So. Then this Daniel was preferred above the presidents and princes because an excellent spirit was in him. And the king thought to set him over the whole realm because an excellent spirit was in him. Then this Daniel was preferred above the presidents and princes because an excellent spirit was in him. And the king thought to set him over the whole realm because an excellent spirit was in him. All right, one more.
more time and I hope you'll join in and maybe at some point you can even share this with a friend and um, hopefully it will brighten their day too. Then this Daniel was preferred above the presidents and princes because an excellent spirit was in him. And the king thought to set him over the whole realm because an excellent spirit was in him. We'll see you next time. Wholeheartedly I give my love